Okay, um, in this video I'm just going to show you how to create an ambient occlusion map for this particular uh, image you see here. So it's just a very simple scene that I've uh, created, apply some very basic materials to it and all the rest. Now what we're going to do is use a, a material override in the render setup here. So if I just click on render setup, you'll see that under the processing tab we have this material override. Now currently uh, I have an AO material in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one uh, and then use that. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's close that for a moment. So I have the material editor open here already. So it's going to go to an empty slot, uh, which should be there, I hope. And I'm going to create a simple blend material here. So just pulling up that there. Um, so material, standard, standard. So it's a standard blend material, uh, and in the diffuse channel, I'm going to put in a mental ray um, particular map. So under maps, we have the standard one there, but under mental ray, you'll see we have ambient slash reflective occlusion. So I'm going to put that on there and uh, see what it does. So currently it's set to occlusion, fall off levels and everything else are just as stated there. So. Now, I'm not going to apply this to any of the, the um, elements in the scene. As I said, I'm going to use the render setup to do that. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the parent on this one, and uh, it's going to rename this to uh, AO2, just to distinguish it from the one that's already in there. And uh, that should be it. So AO2, uh, blin with the map, etc., etc. Now, I haven't changed any of the defaults on this. So let's just go and have a look at our render setup. So we can see uh, back into processing. Now, current, this is where the material override is. So what this does is it overrides every material in the scene with uh, whatever AO we got or whatever material we choose to put in here. So I'm going to click on the enable and now I'm going to select the material. So you can drag it on there. So I'm going to instance that so I can change properties back here and it'll be reflected in here. So I click OK and now it's reading AO2. So let's just have a quick look at the render on that and see what we get. And okay, this is not what we would like. Um, what we should be seeing is primarily a white uh, image with dark parts uh, in around the various objects. So that's no point in continuing on with that, but that's clearly not working. So I'll just cancel that out and the only thing it can possibly be is the material. So let's have a look at that AO2 material and go in, change some settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, let's look at the max distance currently set to zero. I'm going to set this to 100. Um, and I'm going to set the fall off to 15. And let's see if that makes any difference. Now the samples here, the more samples you have, the more accurate the, the map will be. So let's do that and run another render and see does it make a difference. Immediately you can see that that is working a lot better. Uh, not too worried about the ceiling there. Let's see. So it's still working the final gather. And then it's going to render this out for me. Now you can see here, which wasn't immediately uh, obvious in the beauty pass, was the fact that I've got this uh, kind of skirting here, which is of the same color as the, the wall paint. So that's working away. Now let's pause and wait for that finish. Okay, so that's um, just finished up there now. We can see what the, the full map looks like. I'm not exactly thrilled with it. It's not um, terribly big. I'd like to see a bit more darkness uh, in those those edges there just to make them stand out a bit more. So again, what I'm going to do is just pop back into the map here, uh, increase the max distance to 200, increase the fall off to 25, and maybe the samples, I'll just take those up to 50 and uh, hit the render on that. So again, it's, we got its final gather, so it's gonna go a bit quicker this time. You can see it's a little bit more going on here.
it's altogether possible that that's too much. That's getting a bit too loud in there, I think. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use it anyway. So again, I'll just pause while that finishes off. Okay, that's finished now. So what I'm going to do is um, save this down as a PNG file. This is my previous version, so it's going to select that again and call it AO2. Pass like that, and then click Save. So everything looks okay. Click Save. All right. So that's that done. Um, what I want to do now is go and um, bring the Beauty Pass and the AO Pass into Photoshop and work with them there. So I already have an instance of Photoshop running, so I'll just open that and just open the file that I'm using. Sorry, you can't see that now, it's just off screen. Uh, let's see where they put this thing. Uh, oh, there we go. Machine giving warnings again. Okay, so that's the, the beauty pass there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is drop in the, uh, the AO pass. So I'm just getting this from over here. All right, so this is the, um, the location of all those. So there's the, the beauty pass there. Um, so the AO2 pass is the one we just created. So I'm just going to drop that in. And what I'm going to do is just straight up drop it in right click and place it. So now it's in, but you can see there that it's completely overshot. Now one of the upsides of doing a PNG on this is you do have an alpha channel for clear, which means you can see there's been no effect on the AO pass from there. So it's having no effect on the ceiling. Um, okay, so these are my two passes here, but obviously that's overshooting that one entirely. So what I'm gonna do here on the AO2 pass is I'm gonna change that from normal to multiply, like that. And now we can see some, the ambient occlusion sitting on our object. So if I just turn it off there, you see you lose the detail on much of what's going on at the back there. Uh, turn it back on again, and it does darken the whole image. Now that's another problem we need to sort, but you can see there that the skirting is now showing up and it kind of adds a sense, a bit more richness to the image itself. So that is it. Um, so this would be like first stage of our composite image. And then all we need to do is just uh, save it out as, um, let's grab this. So uh, save whatever you want. Um, let's call it comp2 for composite. save it as a Photoshop file so we can come back and edit it later and also save it out as a PNG which is in here somewhere and let's call it composite 2 and click save and that's it that's it it's done now um, let's see what we have so if I go back to this here what we can do is quickly just have a look at those in a preview. So that's the AO pass. And let's see, that's the beauty pass. And that's the composites in there, another composite there. Interesting enough, both the same. All right, thank you.